Public hearing to order at 645, June the 28th, in case your calendar doesn't uh, record such. Uh, this is a public hearing on two ordinances that we have before us, 2011-5, an ordinance to raise the revenue and adopt the budget for the City of Isle of Pounds for the fiscal year beginning uh, July 1st, 2011, ending June 30th, 2012. Um, also, we have an ordinance before us, 2011-07, which is an ordinance amending planning and zoning department uh, it basically removes the term MF, which is multifamily residential district from our zoning. We don't have any, it's just in there, and so we just, it's a house cleaning matter. So as we proceed on, I'm gonna, for the public hearing, I'm gonna ask Linda, our city administrator, to walk us through the budgeting aspects uh, of our public hearing. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, the public hearing, the first one tonight, um, is on the green version of the budget. There are some copies uh, back there on the table for any, anyone who might would be interested in picking up a copy. We will also uh, post a copy on our website, www.iop.net. If you want to preserve a tree and not take the paper, you can look at it there after tonight's meeting, hopefully. Um, what I'm going to do is highlight some of the same things that we uh, highlighted in the last public hearing having to do with the budget, but I'm going to go through those fairly rapidly because I do expect that um, many of you that are here tonight are um, more interested in the changes that were made in the budget from the last time that we met about it until this time that we're meeting about it. So I'm going to focus more on that, but just touching very quickly on the budget overall, uh, the budget does not include any new full-time personnel. It does include a transfer from the hospitality accommodation and accommodations funds, which is similar to what we've done in prior years, to help pay for tourism-related expenses in police, fire, and public works departments. It includes a 3% merit pool for employee salary increases for those who um, might, may deserve to receive them. Um, it includes a savings of some $67,000 by the city going to the state health plan as opposed to the current uh, health plan that we have. Uh, it includes um, an, estimate, an estimate of $4.25 for fuel for the city fleet. Um, it also includes uh, an early payoff of a debt. Uh, city Council's made a commitment to trying to pay off any of the city debts um, early if we are able to do so, and this budget does contemplate paying off a 2009 Mack truck uh, that will save approximately $12,000 in interest expense over time. Uh, the budget includes $200,000 to complete the 53rd to 57th Avenue drainage project and it includes $86,000 in design and engineering funds to begin the next phase of the drainage in that area, which would be 46th Avenue to 52nd Avenue. So we'd be studying uh, and coming up with the engineering design for that segment of the drainage project. There's an additional $150,000 included to go towards the reserve for the uh, recreation ball field renovation. And there's uh, another 100000 to go towards the reserve for future beach restoration projects. Uh, there's 600000 that is earmarked to do the focused erosion project, and this is um, work that we have been contemplating since we completed the 2008 beach restoration project, and so assuming that we are that the project meets the triggers and we secure the permit there is six hundred thousand dollars allocated um, in project money to do that project and the budget includes three hundred thousand dollars to dredge the um, isle of palms marina most important part is that this budget contemplates getting all of that work done with no tax increase to the isle of palms residents so that is the budget in general. What has happened from first reading uh, until tonight is that um, the Planning Commission has been discussing since 2009, uh, almost two years, they have been being responsive to Council's request 
that was in response to residents' complaints that the city tried to figure out a better way to manage beach access parking or right-of-way parking because our visit beach visitation has increased as the population has increased. Uh, there was a recent joint meeting between the Planning Commission and City Council, and at that meeting, one idea that was discussed was the creation of parking nodes. Um, and the first phase of that idea involved the area between Breach Inlet and 10th Avenue. The budget that had first reading had money earmarked in it for design services to look at what project might be identified to be done, but the budget that went through first reading did not include actual construction and implementation expense. So between first reading and what we have uh, tonight, what we have looked at is the possibility of what it would cost to implement the first phase of this project and those expenses have been incorporated into the green version of the budget. Um, again, those expenses do not include any kind of tax impact uh, for the residents of the City of Isle of Palms. They are expenses that will be paid out of the tourism related funds, municipal accommodations tax um, and state accommodations tax, and it's roughly spent 50, uh, split 50-50. And it involves in the first, in the year, the first year, this, two, this 2012 year, involves roughly $290,000 in change from the last budget that, that was presented and this version. There's some visual aids that are posted um, on, the, on the wall back there. And what those visual aids show you is where it is contemplated that um, these parking nodes would be implemented or the first of these and we would be talking in terms of four in the first year if everything goes well with those four then the intention would be eight to be done uh, in by the end of the following year and it involves going to four of the beach accesses along Ocean Boulevard that are 60 feet wide. Uh, we would be looking at 4th Avenue access, 6th Avenue access, 8th Avenue access, and 9th Avenue access. And moving 120 feet into those accesses from the asphalt and roughly 60 feet wide with um, buffers on either side. And each of the parking nodes would accommodate eight to 10 cars. So very small lots, try to make them visually pleasing. Um, we have included an expense for a parking kiosk in each of the four lots. We've included the expense of some signage uh, and, and very um, uh, minor, but uh, work that would have to be done to prepare the sites. A, um, a pervious surface is contemplated in this um, budget and uh, not an asphalt or a surface that would not be pervious. The other element of this and very important element of it is that the section between Breach Inlet and roughly 10th Avenue all of the existing rights of way that currently are being parked on by beach visitors and there's some uh, pictures back there that are laying on the table showing the type of parking that we mean uh, those areas will be posted as residential per, um, parking permit only so the beach visitor parking that is currently happening on the sides of the roads will be moved into paid parking nodes and those roadside uh, areas will only be available for parking if you have a residential parking sticker. Not too dissimilar from the way the city of Charleston and the peninsula, some of you I'm sure have been in the city of Charleston and seen uh, right away parking areas that are posted residential parking by permit only. So what is also contemplated in this budget and included in the expense would be the expense of implementing this residential parking permit only. So if you live in that area 
and you uh, decide you're going to have a party, then we would have a system in place. If you could not accommodate all of your friends coming to the party actually on your property or in your driveway, then you would come to the public safety building and get a temporary parking pass for your guest for that event. Um, or if you wanted to go to the beach a little bit closer to your house, uh, say you live on Palm Boulevard and you want to be a couple blocks closer, you could either go to one of the parking nodes and park there and pay to park, or because you would have a residential parking permit sticker, you could park in one of the designated residential parking only areas. Um, the beach management plan counts roughly about 80 spaces now. You know, I think on any given day, if you go down there and count, there may be more people parked there than, than what the beach management plant counts in spaces. But it, the, the long-term goal of this would be to replace in the parking nodes by providing um, eight parking nodes with eight to ten spaces either to replace the parking that would be being eliminated um, on the um, on the public right-of-way um, at this time. The project will require three permits two from um, SCDOT and one from OCRM. Uh, in, in contemplating the design, which this will have to be designed by a civil engineering firm, um, we would be looking at trying to come up with something that would be the least obtrusive to the neighborhood where um, these would be put, in, put into place. Um, I think I have covered everything um, except the specific elements, but I think to know it's roughly $290,000 in expense that's been added to the budget, uh, and it's all coming out of uh, tourism-related funds, um, is I'm certainly happy to supply any of the details if anyone wants them. Well, the only other thing I would say is that tonight, uh, subsequent in our council meeting, we're going to have first reading on two ordinances, which will get us started. Uh, first reading just says, here's the ordinance that would be required. That opens it up. Then uh, we will subsequently schedule a public hearing, seek input from the public and anybody else who wishes to speak. Who would want to speak if they weren't public? But anyhow, <laughs> uh, after that public hearing, we would then schedule a second reading, uh, modifying or doing whatever we needed to do to uh, to make it right based on the input from the citizens and the public that uh, we gathered up. So that's the process we're about. Uh, we have, well, that's the budget aspect of it. Okay. Uh, thank do you, you want me to go ahead and do MF district, and then you can get? Okay. Um, right. Douglas and I talked about. I mean, the the uh, next ordinance, uh, 2011 and uh, seven. All this is is housekeeping, and some of the other work that we were doing on some of the other ordinances in our code, we noticed a reference to an MF district that's in our code, and uh, that means MF means multifamily. Uh, the city does not have multifamily districts, and we're not contemplating any, and it just seemed um, a, a good housekeeping endeavor to go ahead and just get that out of the code. So that is the only uh, purpose of this, is just to remove the MF district reference um, from the city's code. Okay. Thank you. Now we'll have uh, public comment. I've had two names before me, one of which is yours, Guy Taylor. You can go first. Well, I came to comment on the budget tonight, as I've been doing for uh, quite some time, and I, I want to say that from my point of view, I certainly appreciate uh, everyone holding the line. Uh, it's, it's almost as good as one of the first ones I saw here when uh, my son D. Taylor was uh, chairman of the Ways and Means Committee, and it actually reduced from the previous year. The mayor at that time was a was a fire breathing Democrat, and she said, <laughs> <laughs> she said, you're just doing that so you Republicans could say you reduced it, aren't you? D said yes, and I, I, I always like that. But uh, he, she says, but people always expect it to go up. No, they don't. In fact, I think in most days now they expect them to be coming back down. Uh, so I really do appreciate all the work that went into this, and I want to meet that exotic uh, treasure person with that unusual name that's done all this work. Is she here tonight? Uh, no. She's not. 
Well, I noticed that she was just, you didn't mention her, uh, the, the new hire, that the rag sheet, well, what I call the rag sheet, what is it, the Al and I, know what guy's talking about. I News, or whatever it is, thing, that's interesting, that was an interesting. Debbie's name was not used, Debbie Suggs, our treasurer's name was not appropriately used in the article that we published. Oh, it's Debbie, okay, well, tell Debbie then, the and so congratulate her on guy, getting that notoriety. Guy's working her over. <laughs> <laughs> but really, the main reason I came to talk was really about uh, this thing I just heard about within the last few days. Uh, the uh, the uh, the parking. Would you call them nose? <laughs> uh, goodness, we coin new roads as words as we go along, don't we? Anyway, <clears throat> what was interesting to me about this, and very quickly, this is not a new idea. We first uh, this first was presented to actually didn't get to the council because in those days we had a strong mayor form of things, and and uh, she saw what she wanted to see and threw out most stuff that was worth a darn and. So we, we brought her the idea here of, of uh, uh, when we were still an ad hoc committee in 1986, before we became a planning commission in 1987. We brought the concept forward, really, for entirely different reasons. Uh, right after I moved back in 1985, we'd owned the house since 76, but we moved back in 85, and, and I noticed that there were people having to walk all the way down Palm Boulevard for long distances to get to a road where they could go to the beach. And then people walking along Carolina Boulevard, those are long walks, to, to get to the beach. And so uh, I told everybody I could, please, you can come and park in my driveway if you want to. And so, but there weren't enough driveways to do that. And uh, <clears throat> so when the ad hoc committee was created, the first thing we started working on was what can we do to help the citizens of Isle of Palms? Because we did not even have a zoning code. We had a zoning map, which had been lost for some years, I think, according to Nell Duffy at that time. But, we just didn't have anything that really uh, kind of helped people understand how, how you ruled your life uh, and, and how, what the rules were for living here. So we went forward to the mayor and said, one of the things we'd like to do is take these, which were then pretty snaky tight places, and they, they still are where the lots aren't developed, take these places and uh, let's create some parking for the Isle of Palms residents. We weren't even considering uh, anybody else because we didn't have that much of a problem. It took you so many hours to get over here that nobody came. Uh, not, I said not many people came. So the idea was to try to do something for Isle of Palms residents and said let, let them park there during daylight hours. And that's what I'm here to emphasize. This was a daylight hour concept, not a 24-hour concept. And uh, uh, so at any rate, uh, she apparently checked that with the beach company. I never understood why you had to check things like that with the beach company because there was no planted plan for the front beach at that time other than these court-ordered court access, 60-yard uh, access in the little five-footers. So at any rate, uh, she came back and said, no, they, they wouldn't hear to that. She couldn't support it and all that kind of stuff. And then she said, and oh, by the way, we just appointed a new chairman for your group, and it's going to be the, the beach company's architect. <laughs> now, that literally happened. So he didn't last long, though. He lasted about three months after we became a planning commission. He got so mad at the mayor, he quit. So, so that kind of self-corrected itself. Uh, but I would do want to come back to uh, this. One of the first people that talked before our planning commission made this phrase. Often the most sanguine persons have optimistic illusions which unless most carefully considered will result in irreparable errors. In other words, no good deed goes unpunished. This was an old gentleman that came and talked to us. He was giving us advice on, on, the, on the forming of the planning commission. But anyway, we came up with, uh, couldn't get past it there, but the same idea came up when we worked out, worked up the first draft of the comprehensive plan. I believe that was about 94, 93, 94. We included that in the long list of wants, because we had a long list of how to clean up the wild dunes, uh, uh, what, do you, what do you call it, problems. And of course, they didn't get very far at all. They got thrown out because of invest, vested interests, I think. Uh, but at any rate, uh, we, had, we presented the same idea again for Isle of Palms residents, daylight only. And I come back to you and, and plead with you to say, if you're going to do something like this, I think, personally, I think the idea is still good because there's a lot of space there that's just not being used. And in fact, uh, I would, would tell you this, the first week we were here, <laughs> we noticed they had these big signs up at all these 60-foot intervals that said, beach access. Well, you can guess what happened when the outer towners came to town, particularly <laughs> if they came off of a mountain somewhere. They saw beach access, and so down they went. And so we kept uh, a jeep for a number of years with a chain. 
<laughs> to pull them back out. And one morning, uh, you remember my wife called you and said, uh, there's a young man and, and two naked girls in a car down there <laughs> near the primary dune. I mean, they were beach accessing at all hours of the day and night. Uh, <clears throat> and that we don't have happen. The, the, the idea, someone called me and said, oh, they're going to have it day and night, and you have all this, you, can you imagine this would become the number one makeout place for Charleston <laughs> County? Can you imagine in the wintertime, all the screaming and hollering and all that kind of stuff, and shop would get rich just cleaning the things up. He would get rich. So I just want to caution you about that. For God's sakes, don't even think about doing this in the, in the nighttime hours. Uh, uh, all you have to do is just drag a chain across it. And somebody said, what happens if somebody gets their car locked in there? Well, if you put up a big sign, not these cute little green things, We'll put up a big sign that says this lot closes at 6 o'clock or 7. I think South Carolina has a defined daylight hours deal, maybe for the liquor stores, maybe use the same thing. It says, <clears throat> if, you're, if your car is here then, the gate's going to be locked, chain or something across it. And then they'd have to hot foot it all the way up to the police station to convince a policeman to come down and some way get them out. I don't suggest towing anybody, because that used to be tried over here, and that's the, one of the best ways to make him enemies of everybody, and another way to get the newspaper people to write you up. But please okay. uh, pursue the idea, but no, no nighttime stuff, please. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Okay, next I have uh, Thomas Johnson. Do you get addresses? Okay, yes. Good evening, Thomas Johnson, 200 Palm Boulevard. Thank you. Uh, excuse me, I'm not the most elegant speaker in front of crowds, and this is my first time up here, and I am speaking on the financial aspect of this. Um, I have received numerous emails and have gone through the budget regarding the phase one of a possible eight proposals <coughs> for parking on the island. Two at this point, correct? Just four. Okay. Uh, based on what I've seen, at least on phase one, we're at a net deficit in regards to having to pay for this. Granted, I think parking is a problem. I see cars parked all over Ocean. I see cars parked on Palm Boulevard. Uh, I don't understand the legalities in regard to state rights or government rights on the right of way and why Ocean Boulevard cannot have parallel parking, yet Palm Boulevard is allowed. I don't know if that's a regulation of the beach company. I know Ocean was added after the fact. Uh, my family's been here in Charleston prior to 1670, and my wife grew up on this island. Um, but I am looking at the net deficit in phase one, and that concerns me as a tax-paying citizen on where does the responsibility of the citizens of this community come in to make up for the deficit in regards to this. Uh, you've mentioned the parking passes. I think that's, you know, a glorious idea. Might be a little inconvenience for the citizens. Are they going to be charged for overnight gas? No. Uh, that's great. Um, it, but what concerns me is the environmental impact on this. We're starting now to project cars out towards the beach access. The requirements of parking, a uh, gentleman mentioned before me, chaining the gates. How is that going to affect the sea turtles? Are there going to be street lights? Are they going to be turned off? Uh, you know, we have the people that patrol the beach for the sea turtle population if we have public parking that extends to the dune line or approaches the dune line or the public lights that create this safety for the citizens that park there is that going to affect the sea turtle population uh, in regards to staffing for the parking lots um, Isla Palms has a very good police force I noticed on um, Page 14, an offset of ad tax of 14,500, estimated revenue again on page 14, on page 18, again the budget was listed. On page 6, a 22,090 parking management fee, increased patrols for the breach inlet area. 
Does the Isle of Palms Police Department not already patrol that area? And if so, how do we compensate or justify the additional costs? These are just questions that I'm raising to the committee. Um, I do live in, on that part of Breach Inlet. There is an awful lot of traffic incidents that do occur crossing Breach Inlet, speeding in particular, crossing on the double yellow line. Uh, we have great police patrol in that area and they do remedy the problem. But these are estimated costs. Has the council anticipated any future cost in regards to overnight activities, uh, future cost in regards to possible environmental impact? Has an environmental impact survey even been considered? We're talking about breaching asphalt, parking, oil emissions, gas emissions. The city of Sullivan's Island is already requesting people to turn off their car due to their infamous bridge that they overwhelmingly <laughs> approved. Um, I do understand the residents' concerns. I have parking in my yard. It's unattractive, I don't like it. But eight feet of right of way does belong to the state and they are allowed to park there. I do find it somewhat offensive at times that Ocean Boulevard is off limits and I can't understand why if it is a state road. Um, and those are my questions and my comments and concerns to the committee. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else wish to comment during the public hearing? No? Okay. <laughs> I'm Cheryl Burns. I live at 915 Carolina. And I just wanted to thank the council for addressing this problem of the parking. It has been a problem, and I know it will continue to be a problem as the population grows. And I think the plan that is in place right now or that you're working on sounds like a good plan. And I just want to thank you for, for addressing the problem. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. My name is Jimmy Carroll. I live at number 11 Tabby Lane. I thank y'all who serve for the city, who work for the city, those who are on council, and those who serve on committees. It's a thankless job. Parking is the number one issue facing our island. What we see now is nothing what we're going to see in five to ten years, as others discover what we have already discovered. The parking issue we have is made up of day trippers to the beach, those who come for a few hours or for the day, yet don't pay taxes, don't spend money here at our stores, yet they clog our streets and getting off the island is becoming dangerous. When will somebody get hurt just trying to cross the road because they could not see behind a, a parked car? We are the best beach around, the easiest one to get to. We spend a lot of money for a parking lot, yet it's only full for a few days a week and maybe three months out of the year. Instead of using the public lot, the day trip is spread out over the island where it's less congested. They do so at the expense of the surrounding property owners. Sometimes they leave trash and worse behind. I agree that everyone is entitled to access to the beach, but at whose expense? Just because there are rights of ways does not make them parking lots. I appreciate the city for wanting to do something, but please don't do knee-jerk reactions. Before doing anything, let's talk to those who live around the different sections of the island. Let's talk to those who live next door to the property you're proposing putting these parking nodes. To paraphrase Joni Mitchell's 1970 song, they paid paradise to put up a parking lot, is so true in this aspect. We are in a recession, yet the spitty spends money like a kid going through a candy store. I want, I want, I want. I thought the room accommodation tax money was to be used to promote, to promote tourism, not to build parking lots for day trippers. I honestly believe that by building parking lots in these beautiful winding paths along Ocean Boulevard right of ways will only make the island less desirable, not only for the residents, but those who come here in vacation. It's like killing the proverbial goose that lays the golden egg. Plus, all you're doing is shifting the problem from one side of the street to the other side of the street. Let's maybe think outside the box. Maybe we should consider taking over the maintenance of the roads so we can control how they're used. Why can't we use accommodations tax money to improve the roads that will in turn promote tourism? 
Beach parking is not only an Isle Palms problem, but a Charleston County problem. We have spent millions providing parking lots. Let the county help us. Before we do these reactions, let's talk about on, to our residents and how to our county and state elected officials. Maybe they can help us. Maybe we can think green and have buses bring people out to the beach to be dispersed around the island. Why do we want to harm the natural dunes? I thought we loved the natural aspect of our island. Not only does it seem that we are destroying dunes, but we're putting commercial use in residential neighborhoods. I would not be surprised if the city is not sued if this were to take place, thinking of property values being decreased even further. Not to mention tearing down dunes would only become rivers should we have another Hugo. Lastly, in closing, after the last public hearing about parking and 99% of the people spoke about the problems along Palm Boulevard, I heard the city was wanting to buy a lot on Front Beach to turn it into a park. Where's the parking going to be for that park? You know, we talk about 12 people per house. How many cars would be in that lot? Two people per car would far exceed 12. Where is the parking to be? Just because the money is available due to the half cent sales tax for green space does not mean that we have to get it to create more problems. Please, let's show fiscal responsibility and stop spending. If anything, Isle Palms government is supposed to provide services for its residents, not for Charleston County. As said before, this is our island's biggest problem outside the economy. Let's work on a solution together. Let's talk with the different neighborhoods and elected officials from Charleston County and the state. Ask them to come spend a Saturday or Sunday out here to feel our pain. I used to take a skateboard from 37 to the grocery store. Now I can barely cross Palm Boulevard. I would be more than happy to offer my services and time to help y'all find a solution. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry. Anyone else, please? Yeah. Well, we're going to have, we're have public comment period yeah, during council meeting. Oh, also, yeah. if you want to do it now. Okay. As the rest of them are done, I appreciate the work that you folks do. And all the junk you put up with. Old cusses like me come in the core at you. Clay, now, just in case somebody's watching on television who doesn't know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> Clay, Tell them where you live. Clay Cable. And that's me smiling over there. It was right. a hell of a lot of fun when I was there. It wasn't this bad. And we had records too. I've got a problem with putting the parking lot in a residential area. I've been told that it pertains to roads and, and bypasses the zoning, but I respectfully submit to my friend Doug that it's a commercial <coughs> activity and it doesn't belong in a single family residence. This would be the second intrusion into the residential <coughs> district of this type of activity in about 30 years. The parking lot at Carroll's was the first one and this would be the second. In regards to whether these would do any good, I would suggest that what you're proposing to build will accommodate one-tenth of the vehicles that are parking in the residential area now. Barb and I have both counted in the last day or two, and, and just about one in 10 is what you would accommodate. The Isle of Palms is, uh, has 1,113 paid parking spaces. 1,113, including the PRT <coughs> lot. Now that's not counting the district from 21st to 41st. We're not talking about that. Sullivan's Island has no paid spaces and they control residential parking quite nicely. I'll let that settle a little bit. Folly Beach has 240 spaces in pods and PRT has 155 that wash away quite regularly for a total of 395 
And they also have about a mile of roadside parking quite similar to our 21st to 41st situation here. I have some samples of rock which I forgot to bring and I'll bring them and leave them with you to show you what rock does in a sand pile. Within 24 hours, you cover this with six inches of rock, which is what is proposed, I understand. It will be completely blinded. All the voids will be filled. And the dunes will begin to reconstruct that you've taken down across your parking lot. There will be a constant uh, uh, maintenance problem. The occurrences of a storm or major erosion would litter the beach with rocks, would litter the beach with rocks, rendering them not safe to walk on and would preclude nesting turtles. A turtle wouldn't dig a hole to lay eggs in a damn rock pile and would be almost impossible to clean up. We seem to forget these, these dunes are moving constantly. Now, some of you may not realize that. You haven't crossed them as many years as I have, but they move all the time. Sometimes you can go down to Fifth Avenue and you can only see people's heads walking on the beach. Other times you get a much better view. You can see some belly buttons and things like that. <laughs> But that tells you how much these things move and how much they go back and forth, including the berm. So 150 feet from the roadway is not far enough for anything. You should be maintaining constant, you would be maintaining constantly. And what would you do with the sand contaminated with rocks? You pick it up and try to keep it to where people can drive on it. You're going to have to buy a loader and operator and all that stuff. But what would you do with the residue that you pick up that has rocks in it? You don't have a separator. I can get you one, but you might have, you don't have one. First of all, you're proposing to place these beside single-family homes that will incur at least a 25% loss in value. If you're building it with my house, I'd be talking to a judge before you got the first rock placed. The four pods would require about 750,000 pounds of rock. 750,000 pounds of rock if you're going to put it six inches deep, which you'd have to do to drive over it. And a large part of this could very well end up on the beach where people walk and turtles nest. It appears to me that we're doing far more than any of our neighbors. We're doing far more to accommodate visitors than taking care of the people that live here and pay taxes. The mechanics of this are not as simple as a lot of people think they are. The mechanics of placing rock on the beach it just should not be done. I don't care how far it's from the shoreline. And I thank you again. Okay. Thank you, Clay. Okay. Very good. One more. One more. Hi, I'm um, Melinda Mitchell. I live at 702 Ocean Boulevard. I do not live next door to the beach access path. I just heard about this within the last day or two and hearing all the comments tonight. I'm just concerned that this hasn't really been thought through and it seems like a lot of money for about 30 parking places and they're, they're scattered and I don't really think this is going to do that much to solve the problem. I just think this ought to be thought through and you ought to talk about it a little bit more. I know you're rushing to try to spend this accommodations tax money because it's available or wherever the money's coming from, but I just think you need to think this through a little bit more. I've heard a lot of things that concern me. Um, I don't know, and hearing how many parking places there are at other beaches and how we, we seem to be almost making it easier for, for day trippers to come to the beach, I, I don't know, I would rather see the money go toward building a parking garage in the commercial district rather than scattering these, these parking lots throughout the residential district. And I'm just, 
it just to go back 120 feet from the road, that is so close to the dunes, and I, I worry about headlights and turtles, and I worry about the pollution from the cars, and I'm just not sure to park eight cars that it's really worth it, and I just wish you would table this and think about it some more. Okay, thank you. Anyone else wish to speak? Please. Now you started something. Hi, I'm Barb Govey and I live on 51st Avenue and I'm going to talk about my street but first of all I want to talk about a lot of the comments I've heard here tonight and I think everybody says they don't want what City Council or Planning Commission or whatever is com coming up with but where are the other ideas? I mean, we have to do something. I think everybody understands we have to do something. Um, I'm with this last girl that I'd love to see a parking garage downtown rather than in your neighborhood or your neighborhood or my neighborhood because I already am a parking lot in my neighborhood. <clears throat> I think if you look at 51st Avenue, if you go from 41st to 56th, the, I am the second worst street for parking. And if you look down 51st Avenue on any given afternoon in the summertime, you can see that if you had to get a safety vehicle down there, or a couple of them down there, heaven forbid an ambulance gets stuck halfway down there, they'll never get back out. So I think the safety issue needs to be sought out in these neighborhoods. And I think that we need to come up with ideas on the other end of the island. I think planning commission's trying. What's your proposals? Is there any, more, any, any proposals that you can come up with? You may not like it. I guess, what I think what the Planning Commission and City Council is trying to do is to come up with a way to get them out of the side streets and make the, where the streets are narrow and it is a safety issue and get them at least siphoned somewhere. I'm with all of you, I'd rather see them downtown. Rather see them downtown but if we can't do that, I'd rather see them in the areas that they're talking about now. But let's all come up with ideas. This, is, this island's for the residents. It's not for the day trippers. I don't want them to be convenienced. They're already convenienced and they wreck my day every Saturday and Sunday with a, having to be careful I don't hit a car going up and down the street or a person with all the people. So let's just all work together on this and send in your ideas i'm sure planning commission would love to hear from you city council would love to hear from you and while we're down at my end of the island i think palm boulevard along my end of the island is right up to the wild dunes fence there's lots of room there for parking that would get them off our side streets so that if we have a safety issue if we need an emergency vehicle if we need to get somebody at that beach fast and you've got a fire truck, you've got an ambulance, you've got police cars, you're gonna have traffic jam USA with side bumpers of cars that you're never gonna be able to turn around and get out of there. So let's consider that too when we're thinking about all this parking issues. But let's just all quit saying no, 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 but look for alternatives. That's okay, all I can thank say. You. Okay. Anyone else, anyone else, one more? Thank you, Council. I'm Stacy Johnson. I live down at Second Avenue. I'm also the beach sweep coordinator for Isle of Palms. So, um, I've lived on every part of this island. Every part of this island. I have to honestly say I voted against the connectors. One of my first voting opportunities <laughs> ever in my lifetime. I know, <laughs> but I did because I knew life was going to change on this little island that was a very inconvenient place to be. Um, but. After that happened, you know, it made life a little more exciting out here for us young people. And traffic was an issue back then. And we were told then the county park was going to solve our problems. Any problem we had with day trippers, the county park was going to solve the problems like it did for Folly Beach. At the time, I can remember saying, I really don't want Isle of Palms to be anything like Folly Beach. But, you know, these people are experts. They know what they're doing. We got city lots. There's not a day that goes by that I don't walk, run, 
drive a golf cart through this area. Um, it's my neighborhood now. Um, it is a problem a handful of the days of the year, period. I really think that this is well-intentioned. I really do. I just think that building parking lots on the beach side is not the best solution at this point. I really do feel that we should consider parallel parking on ocean. Um, at this point, my mom and dad, our family homes on 40th Avenue, Palm Boulevard is a much bigger parking issue, in my opinion, than the area we're talking about here. It's a danger. This council has widened the road in front of my mom and dad's house, and there's not a time that we almost don't have an accident on a heavy weekend pulling out of mom and dad's house in front of her house on 40th Avenue. And that increase is mainly due to what they've built down in Wild Dunes. So to me, this is a, a, a microcosm of the issues that are happening on the Wild Dunes, closer to Wild Dunes aspects of the island. Um, I don't know. I don't, day trippers, I'm not here nor there. I have no business interest whatsoever in it. I have personal interest in this island only. Um, I find that they litter, yes. I, they can be annoying, yes. They don't necessarily spend money at our businesses. However, I think they're less likely on 2nd and 3rd Avenue to be dumping garbage than people who are parking in a parking lot because what I've seen with what we have on our end of the island right now are people who are coming down to do kite surfing and water sports in the afternoons. And these people, generally speaking, are much more environmentally aware than the people who are parking in the parking lot and going down to the business district part of our island. Um, with that being said, I also feel like our island has been very schizophrenic in the way that we're promoting ourselves and that I have also seen from Breach Inlet to, Breach, to 10th Avenue and two local Charleston magazine and recently an article in the paper that highlights it as the best spots to park if you're a local person who wants to go to the beach, enjoy a wonderful beach access. So with that being said, we are at a quandary. It is that. I don't think parking lots are an answer at all. I think you're going to encourage the wrong um, type of people to come at that point. And if you build it, they will come. Um, I think people feel less comfortable parking in somebody else's yard. They might be willing to do it if they're going to go kite surf for a couple hours or surf for a couple hours or take their dogs out for a stroll. But they're not the same people who are coming out with, you know, their 10 kids in a cooler dumping their diapers. Um, and that's my opinion. So thank okay. you. And I thank, thank you for your consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I don't know whether you're holding the ceiling up or you want to speak. Can I say something? Sure, step forward. Okay. My name's Danny Alston. I live on Carolina Boulevard. I've been there for 40 years. I've heard what you're saying, honey, but you're wrong. They come over here at 8, 9 o'clock in the morning. They bring their trash over here. They bring their garbage. My wife and I were flashed last week by a guy who opened his pants up and showed me his private parts. They're throwing trash in our yards. They're arguing for parking spaces in other people's yards. It's been a problem here since I've been here. I don't know where you've been living all your time, but it's not just kite surfers and other kind of people coming over here. It's day trippers who stop at Publix and get their stuff, and they dump it over here on the beach, and they have no respect for the homeowners. And I think these people are doing a good job. I think we should stand up for them and fight for them. There is a problem in Carolina, just like it is on the other end down there. We are the oldest neighborhood on the island. And I think we need to have that dignity and respect. <coughs> and thank you. Okay. Nothing else? I'd like to close the public hearing. Oh. Not quite 7 o'clock, but... <laughs> <laughs> I'll close nice. the public hearing, and in about two minutes, we'll start the city council formal... Somewhere.